Okay, I am so sorry that I've been so hit and miss with this segment lately. But as you may have heard, there are only about 11 sane people in the entire state of Georgia. So we're all having to pick up a little slack lately. And I got to be honest with you, judging by the news cycle, I think misogyny has been taking advantage of my absence. So let's start with friend of the show, Satan, the prince of darkness, and check in on his latest plans to neuter men by destroying their manhood. That's the assessment of Pastor Tony Evans, anyway, and he made that clear at the Promise Keepers 2020 Men's Conference. This story comes to us from the Christian Post, mostly because my antivirus software asked if I was fucking kidding when I tried to go to the website for the conference. And it's all about how our failure to rigidly enforce sexist gender roles leads to young people to, quote, come up with their own conclusions of life and meaning and dignity and sexuality, end quote. Now, don't get me wrong. I can see how that would be bad. What if some kid concluded that the meaning of sexuality was cheeseburger? That would make for really awkward drive through visits. But I'm not sure how guys doing lady chores factors into it. And unfortunately, that apparently is supposed to be a, a priori knowledge because Tom Evans never tries to connect those dots at all. Just, you know, lack of gender roles leads to furries or gay people or whatever group he meant to demonize with that euphemism. Evans is hawking a book all about this concept, by the way. I won't bother with the title, but suffice it to say his conclusion is that all the good stuff was men and all the bad stuff is women. Actual quote from his speech, quote, God says, I am the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. He never says, I am God of Sarah, Rebecca, and Rachel. And as despicable as that kind of shit is, at least I can appreciate its honesty. Far too often, sexism is hidden behind a veneer of intellectualism, traditionalism, or most often, concern for women and children. And thanks to a new study from IBIS Reproductive Health and the Center for Reproductive Rights, that hypocrisy coding is all the more transparent. Their study looked at states that scored high in abortion restrictions, stuff like trap laws, insurance restrictions, mandatory waiting periods, etc., and then compared their scores on stuff that demonstrated a genuine concern for the well-being of women and children. You know, stuff like maternity leave policies, family subsidies, strong education policies, and health care funding. And, surprise, surprise, it turns out that the states with the most abortion restrictions also have the fewest safeguards for mothers. I mean, look, it's not like there's an excuse for misogyny that would be forgivable. But there's a difference between ignorance and malice. And when it comes to religion and women, you get both. And on that note, I'll take my leave and hand things back over to Noah, Heath, and Eli. 